It's another Mad Hatter Shows podcast. I'm Neil Snyder. With me tonight, Sandy Rusk. Hi, Neil. It's been a while since you've been in that seat. You're right. It has. We got some new preview stuff, too. You're only at the beginning of the show. I tell people, here's what Mad Hatter Shows is, but we kind of we kind of displayed that here. We got all of our artists that we use. Um, if you're watching this video, you're probably uh, subscribed to one of our friends or family, uh, some kind of f- affiliated venue or an artist we work with or um, one of our pages. So uh, we're a national entertainment company. Yes. And this is another edition. So yes. How you Glad been? To be here. How you been since the last time we saw you? Oh my goodness, just crazy busy like you, and you know you have been out there traveling a lot, Neil. We have done a lot. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we had Zach rushing in uh, Florence, Alabama, and Paragold, Arkansas. I think we got a couple photos from that weekend. Uh, that was a fun weekend. We had about nine hundred people between the two shows. Oh, awesome! Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, we love going to Paragold. We've done nothing but sellouts so far in Paragold. Um, that's a picture right there from Florence, Alabama, and that's the lower section. So, um, we actually had a balcony as well and a general admission, uh, section behind us. So that was a tight fit that night, but we had a lot of fun. We're on a college campus where we had to sell drink tickets separately. Wow. Then, uh, (laughs) then they had to take the tickets over to the bar. So it was like, we had all kinds of rules and we dealt with crowd control, but that's, that's part of the charm of of going anywhere in the country and and doing music and, and mainly comedy. That's mm-hmm. uh, two comedians here on tonight's show. Yes. I know one of them you're excited about because you know him. I am. I definitely know Mark Skippy from Family Ties. Yeah, we got Price. A, we got a <laughs> weekend Price. coming up with Mark Price. I think we've got a, yeah. a poster showing those two dates. Uh, yeah. We'll be talking to him at the bottom of the hour, but uh, Richmond, Indiana, Terre Haute, Indiana. Yes, I've got those on my calendar. That'll be a good time. Yeah. We're at the Zora Shrine on the 9th. And then on the 10th, uh, we've got him at the New Boswell Brewery. I don't always know if we're going to be downstairs or if we're going to be on the fourth floor, but we are going to be downstairs for that one at the brewery location. So that same weekend, our first guest will be with us. uh, Actually, it's the weekend before, uh, and we're we're highlighting it tonight. Uh, Kayvon uh, will be with us in three different cities at the beginning of November. So we've got his stuff up there as well. So Sure. Is your headset playing music as well? It is. I feel like I want to discreetly text our producer and tell him that, but um, um, I guess we're going to see it over Do you like that or do you not want it? I've been doing it for my other show. No music? Okay. Yeah, it's just... uh, Can everybody hear that or is it just me? No, it's it's for everyone. I feel like I'm in an elevator or something. (laughs) It fills in the, the, the dead space a little bit sometimes, you know? Okay. Well, I guess we should put it to a vote. So if you're at home and you're, you're commenting on this, if you like the other music, um, then, then set, tell us, and, and I'll, I'll change it if that's. I agree with on. you, though. Okay, we're old. We're yeah. uh, we're not <laughs> we're not nearly as as cool, I guess. Mm, uh, maybe that's it. A lot of new shows announced since the last time we had this, though. Another Uncle Laser is coming to uh, Mad Hatter shows. I know we've got a, uh, a clip of this guy. He's uh, apparently quite TikTok famous, which I'm starting to learn. If you guys, if you guys tick, have TikTok at home. Mad Hatter Shows has a page. We don't have a lot of followers yet, so you can help us with that by going and, and clicking the subscribe button. But Uncle Laser, 2.2 million on uh, on TikTok. So He's awesome. coming to the Irving. Maybe Sandy will be on the scene for this guy. He's uh, It looks like he'd be a fun interview. Uh. He definitely does. <laughs> it, yes, I definitely need to get that one on my calendar. So that should be a good time. We're trying to line up a night for him to be on the next podcast also. So um, definitely we're getting accustomed to... Uh, to him, and you can look there. We have the TikTok there, and you can see the uh, the Napoleon Dynamite, the quick little blurb you saw at the beginning of this as well. Um, that video is the most recent one that's up there. I got my I got my much <laughs> younger girlfriend doing cap cut, and uh, <laughs> like because she can figure the apps out better than me. So, you know, if you see something that looks like a really cool video, chances are it was not me uh, online. It was something I outsourced to someone else. So. Um, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's the only way to get it done. But January 17th, we're going to have the Napoleon Dynamite cast. Uh, uh, you know, Rico and, and Napoleon. and uh, That'll be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and uh, God, I'm, I forgot Pedro. Yes. I was trying to come up with a name, too, the vote for Pedro. But all three of those guys are going to be in the house. We play the movie, and then they do a live stage show where they have stuff that's 
audience participation, right? Yeah, yeah, it's family friendly, yeah. so it should be a, a good time. But yeah, they'll, you know, if you want to cosplay, you may end up on stage. You know, there's interactive stuff. Uh, there's that there's fun. not a stand up show. Uh, it's a, it's its own stage thing. So check it out. It's going to be in West Lebanon, Indiana. It's your chance to come out to Seeger High School Auditorium. This high school has like a better setup than you know all these historic theaters we go to. They've got state of the art sound and all these kind of upgrades. So they're excited also about bringing some big name shows uh, to their venue. So that should be a good time. And it's like thirty five minutes from my house. So that's yeah. uh, that's a positive as well. So. Uh, we got that uh, that's going on. Our New Year's Eve has been announced. I know that uh, New Year's Eve plans have been put on hold a little bit because uh, mm-hmm. originally we were planning on doing those with Ron. But uh, great substitute show, great update here with it. And we're coming back to Paragold. So it'll be Shelly Belly. There may be some other uh, comedians on that show. I know at one point it was going to be more than one headliner. But, uh, you know, it's it's possible that you're you're going to come out to the show to watch Shelly and you're also going to get me so that's the uh oh wow you know that's that's the that's the thing that always happens with scheduling <laughs> if I'm in the building I may do some time so yeah that's what's going on there but uh if that lineup changes at all anybody else has added we will put it on there but you can see we've already made the poster festive we've got her in her uh in her new year's eve hat so she's ready she's excited we got more shows coming up with her too we're going to be announcing several of those as it comes, but I think there's already going to be six or eight 2024 shows that uh, by the time the next podcast comes around, we're going to probably have those announced. Uh, we've already announced Ashtabula, Ohio, and also Erie, Pennsylvania. That's going to be in February. The idea is also to get her out uh, west to Nebraska and Kansas, and uh, a couple other surprise ones, I guess. I don't want to don't want to say all of them yet. Uh, Anything Central Indiana, maybe. You know, we just had her in Indianapolis, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if that'll be on for 2024 or not. So they they like to space out their sure. their time. So uh, right now, Indianapolis has Dave Landau and Uncle Laser on the calendar, and also Josh Prey. So um, you know, three different Indianapolis opportunities for you to uh, to be on the scene if you're I... not willing to drive. I feel like you should drive. You're like I know, I know. It doesn't seem to work out that way. You're, but you're telling me that I, you know, I mean, I'm envious of you going to places. You got to get on the road. You got to drive to get there. Especially all the food that you guys eat when you're out and about. I see that, and it's pretty impressive. <laughs> impressive. Uh, that's what you, you call me fat. I think. Well, it's impressive that you're not fatter than you. Uh-oh. Are okay. No, All fatter right. than I'll, you. I'll that. That's no. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not fatter than you have been. You haven't gained a lot of weight yet. I feel like this. I is, got a shovel down in the garage. I, 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 I feel like this being live is just making it tough on Sandy. So, uh, luckily, I think our first guest is here. It was like it's a. Um, they just went through a door, from what we can see, and we heard the doorbell, which is our Zoom thing. Yes. So let's go ahead. Yes. Uh, right now, uh, this guy is all over the internet. He's a viral superstar. He's been an actor for years. You've seen him on MTV. Um, several different uh things that we're going to probably talk about here in a little bit yeah. we've got a weekend coming up at the beginning of november and our uh, our trio of uh, uh we've done this this three stop a few times hobart indiana fort wayne indiana and julia illinois so um assuming he's still there we're going to bring up cave on hey i'm here how's it going you are good deal good to we, i did see you uh now we got <laughs> audio yeah we have to do audio only they told me it's just an audio podcast so if they I don't know. I wasn't clear on that. Oh, I'm very glad that I uh, provided some images for us to to pull up here. Then, so <laughs> uh, we, we we may have our producer googling some more here. So, uh, yeah, pick okay. my best selfies. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, glad to have you on the show. You'll be making your debut with Mad Hatter Shows. So, welcome aboard. This is uh, Sandy. She's kind of our resident interviewer. So, if she sneaks backstage, please don't. Don't kick her out, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing. She's it. got the all access pass, definitely. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll see you backstage. Awesome. So, somebody Perfect. doesn't know who you are. Describe, uh, describe who you who you are, what you do, uh, what a stage show the, someone come to see you on uh, is like. Well, you got to come see the shows because there's not many comedians who can do. If there's some, you know, 17, 18, 19 year olds there, then we'll tone it down PG, you know, thirteen for the young ones. And then, you know, if people like, you know, your age are there, we'll go rated R. We'll go all the way. The sky's the limit. Let's go. 
Wow. Very diverse. Mm. <laughs> oh. I also make fun of myself first. This allows me to start po- pointing the uh, ammunition towards everyone else in the theater. And by the end of it, we all realize we're all equal and we laugh together. And I've been uh, I've been watching some of your clips. We've been sharing some of them on the page already. You're not really afraid to go at anybody from what I can tell. No, and it's so funny because like one week I make fun of having a Middle Eastern dad and my regular, what I call regular American mom. And uh, but then the next week we did a joke, uh, you know, just this Monday. Every Monday I release a new video because I want Mondays to be more fun for everybody. And just this Monday we did a video about a situation back when I lived in Los Angeles where I had three gay roommates. I was the only non-gay guy living there. And so people said, well, what if they turn you gay? I said, well, I think they're just roommates. They're not vampires. So I should be okay. <laughs> but we'll see. You know, your if they come in my room, I want to saw your you know what? Hey, 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 <laughs> your place was probably immaculate. You probably had really good food. It smelled good in there. Like that's uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, it was a really big place. So I always tell people, hey, you know, you gotta come see it to believe it. But uh actually they're very messy so i was like what's with all these stereotypes and they're not even true they're not even cleaning up after me this is ridiculous <laughs> That's so wild. it didn't work out quite the way you thought <laughs> <laughs> no but other than that we had a fun time and then the reason is is west hollywood is where two of the biggest comedy clubs in america reside yeah and so i ha- you know i wanted to just walk there i was so sick of and l- little did i know you have to walk there a lot because they keep towing your car Every other Tuesday, every Thursday, street, street sweeping day, third Fridays, fourth Monday, and you're going, oh, every t- every month I come out, my car was missing. And in L.A., you're like, did it get stolen? Oh, no, the city just stole it once again. That's okay. Ah, parking is a problem. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And you know what they do? They take your car at uh, 11 at night, and you go get it at, at 1 in the morning, and they go, well, that was two days, so that'll be $800, no. $400 a day. You're like, oh, come on. That was two hours. <laughs> That's crazy. So our producer's out on your website right now. It looks like there's some good places to uh, uh, acquaintance, uh, to make your acquaintance, to, to become a, you know aware of all of your material and all that. There's also some specials there. Um, so where should somebody start? Like, uh, how do you, you know, if somebody's like, hey, what's what's your best stuff? What's my best intro to you? Where should they start? I love when people go on Instagram. It seems to be the most popular. And I've just tagged my top three videos right at the top of my Instagram page, at K-V-O-N Comedy. And something I never do, I'm going to give away five free tickets to the first five people that listen to this podcast because we want people that are paying attention, big fans of yours, to get a free ticket to come to the show. And it's not going to be, you know, not one person going, I want all five. Mm -hmm. The idea is you're watching, you go check out the Instagram, you message me on Instagram or Facebook. You go, hey, here's my favorite joke of yours. I love the podcast. And we'll do it. And all we ask, you bring some locals, bring some friends and family, because comedy is to be shared as a date night or with, like, the neighborhood. Nice, nice. So they just need to send you an inbox that says, hey, I heard you on the podcast. And uh, yep. I hope they get this. Say, I saw you. Uh, I saw you. Uh, I, you didn't see me. I heard you on the <laughs> podcast with my other two favorite hosts I wasn't able to watch. There we go. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs> so you've been at that. I mean, you look young on the videos. You've been doing this for a minute, though. You've been you've had a longer career. I just discovered uh, that you, uh, you're you're part of the Ginger Dead Man uh, franchise. Is that, uh... <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing audition I showed up for the Ginger Dead Man. It's like uh, kind of like the Chucky doll that comes to. People made fun of me. Hey, how could a how could a gingerbread man come to life and kill people? I go, I don't know. How could the Chucky doll come to life? You know, these are horror films. They're ridiculous. But, but know, that was a fun thing. I'd seen the first one. I did not realize it was like a, an entire universe of films. So I'm going to have to get on Tubi and watch this second one because um, you've got like a substantial part in it, for what I could tell. Like you're the, basically the lead, but it's not made of gingerbread. Yes, I was a lead actor who had this uh, failing movie studio, and everyone was dying on my movie studio set. And instead of getting mad, I go, let's film this. We have great actual footage we can take of this. So I was using it to my failing advantage. And it's a very, if you ask me what order to watch movies, that would be last. Uh-huh. <laughs> so and I, and I didn't mean to pull it up, like to, to poke fun, obviously no. you're doing other things now, but uh, uh, they've got a clip here from when you had an MTV show. So maybe that's a better place to, to start. But I've got a lot of friends that, uh, that work in the, you know, the kind of the B horror area. So um, how did you not end up in like 32 other movies after? 
after that? Did you make a conscious effort to not? Because uh, it seems like all those guys are always filming multiple projects all at once. Yeah, I I had a, a very lucky thing with Hollywood where I was able to do one of everything. I did a Lego commercial, oh. uh, and, but then and then I only got a couple other commercials after that. I did two movies, one with Napoleon Dynamite's John Heater, which you're seeing right there on the screen. Yeah. He was a, just the nicest guy in the world. And uh, then I did a comedy special with Dry Bar Comedy. So I've done everything once or twice in the industry, and I've touched every base. And now I have my own late night kind of a spinoff of the weekend update or the daily show with uh, Trevor Noah. Well, we have my own version called The Right Show. So I've done, you know, a little bit of everything. But my favorite thing is the live stand up because you tell a joke and you know right away if the crowd loved it. And then after the show, you do the meet and greet pictures, signing in books, T-shirts. So it's a whole endeavor. And then there's nothing that beats live comedy. So support your live comedians and your live theaters. Awesome. You can actually get that feedback from your fans. and that's, Yes. Yeah, most definitely. You know what? It, it really helped me because I wrote I've written two books now. The first one is called Once You Go Persian. <laughs> and uh, the second one is called Once You Go Everywhere. It's coming out this uh, this new year. And the reason I had to sell Once You Go Everywhere and I had to come up with this book is because there's not that many Persians out there. So <laughs> all one million Persians bought my book. We're done with that. And uh, Once You Go Everywhere, it, that's the funniest stories of my travels from Singapore to Iceland and all the way down to Pensacola, Florida and back. So uh, there's a there's a chapter on each funny place I went to and a lot of travel tips. But uh, the, the reason I love writing now is because... The problem with most writers is they sit in a room and go, I think this will be okay. I think I'll write this. As a stand-up comedian, each chapter is full of jokes that I know have worked on stage because the audience either said yay or nay, and all the no's are gone. So you're going to have a good time with that book. I like that. Very cool. We got you in uh, northern Indiana and in Illinois. Are you uh, familiar with those areas? This will be the first time you've, you've come to those spots. I had to look at a map to figure out where I'm going to be. And I find that if you're in a big major city, people don't care. There's too much going on in New York City. There's too much going on in L.A. I saw Chris Rock perform for 28 people at a comedy club wow. in, in L.A. When I come to Fort Wayne or Joliet, uh, I think that this will be one of the biggest events in town. At least that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, and Hobart's the third one. Hobart, they they like calling themselves Chicago Land, but they're on the Indiana side, so nobody in Chicago acknowledges it. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're from Hobart, you say you're Chicago Land, so you're you're going to be uh, up in that area. But uh, um, yeah, we've had a lot of fun shows well, there and and the old historic theaters. Um, so you know, th those are the ones I enjoy doing more so than than slick clubs. Uh, this is my I I, I I enjoy them better. You get more time with the people. Some people bring you know they say the shows are ages eighteen and up, but I just got off of a cruise ship in alaska and i was able to entertain uh, there's a baby in my audience like a <laughs> one-year-old so they held it up like simba to prove it was in the audience i couldn't believe it myself well, and so yeah. um you know I, I don't mind if you don't mind you know if, if someone brings a 16 15 16 year old just let us know they're there and the show turns uh we we can turn down the heat a little bit but it'll still be just as funny because a lot of jokes don't need any bad language. You just need to have good emotions and good uh, act outs on the stage. Yeah, my favorite jokes to, to tell myself are the ones that are dirty that are not profane. Where it's almost yes. you, you know innuendo. It's got to be clever, and, and, you, and when somebody laughs at it, like they you, you earned it. You know what I mean? It's uh, um, <laughs> so that's that's how I like uh, getting there. But yeah, definitely. If you did a dry bar special, you're not uh, you're not allowed to go R rated on those, right? dry bar they pull you aside and they go now you you know how to work clean right you go yes they go do you know how to work provo clean i go gee that sounds like a new kind of a uh, infomercial product you got your shirts clean but are they provo clean call us today so uh yeah with dry bar you gotta go clean uh, to a degree where a kid like a nine-year-old kid could be watching with their grandma and nobody's cringing or going hey let's change the channel that's their whole goal well, what I really liked was your um, your clips where you were uh, doing impressions and they were political. 
Oh, thank you for saying that. I like that a lot because you were that is very, a you were very fair in every direction. You were just as um, you made fun of everyone. So uh, that's a great point you said. When I do the cruises, uh, if you say, "Oh, you make fun of one politician," half the t- half the cruise ship tightens up. Okay, right. then you make. But when you make fun of both, they all yeah. clap and laugh together. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that. And your impressions are spot on. They were really <laughs> amazing. Maybe you could do a couple of those for us. Oh, absolutely. So some of the impressions I do, well, it started during the pandemic. I never really did impressions, but there was a guy who kept telling me I was non-essential. That was Dr. (laughs) Anthony Fauci. If you don't get the vaccine, you have no business working as a comedian. (laughs) <laughs> and then o- Owen Wilson came on. Oh, He's like, yes. everyone's got to get it. You got to just save the either stay indoors or get the vaccine. OK, come on, guys. Wow. <laughs> and then next thing you know, you got Donald Trump. Not everybody needs the vaccine. Truckers don't need it. Their whole job is in quarantine, folks. They're quarantined in a truck. So that's what I've been enjoying <laughs> doing. And uh, I used to do a Kamala Harris impression, but I'm not that flexible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, so, uh, I certainly enjoyed them. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you guys real quick what I decided to do because your quest, your question was fantastic. You said, "Do you know the area?" I don't know the area, so I got a flight to Midway, Chicago, and I got a rental car to Midway, and I'm driving over there to Hobart. I think isn't that the first night Hobart? Yes, on a Thursday night. Yeah. I'm driving there, and the reason people go, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? You could have flown into, you know, blank airport. The reason is because I got to return the rental car in Midway. So, um, I, you know, you if you do a one-way with a rental car, they could hit you up for $2,000 extra fees for not bringing it back. So, I'm wow. doing the long-haul trucker the, uh, the, the Thursday night. And then it gets a little easier on Friday. And by Saturday, I'm within striking distance of Midway once again. So yeah, Joe, I am Joe, budget It's basically Chicago land also, and you're in the right state even. So uh, you, you did yes. good planning. So As long as Chicago doesn't uh, steal my car, I'll be all set. <laughs> awesome. Well, our tickets are going to be at madhattershows.com. Now, let's say we've got somebody uh, outside the country or that's doesn't own a car and they're in Montana, uh, <laughs> so they're not going to make it to these shows. Um, your website's the best place to go. Your Instagram, like, where's the uh, where's the best way for them to to stay tuned until you come to them? Yes, absolutely. Everyone can go on k vonncomedy.com. That's k hyphen v o n comedy.com. Go on my Instagram. I will respond for the next 24 hours to anyone who watched uh, this. And uh, it's all about spreading the laughter and the love. So my promise to you is if you don't like one of my jokes, it's 60 minutes. So I have a new one every 30 seconds for the next <laughs> hour. So you're going to have yeah, a lot yeah. of chances. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, uh, I've heard that your your opener of those three nights is ugly, but he tries hard. So hopefully you'll be nice to him. That's um, that's what they told me. Yeah, I just they, they prepared me for that. And I think I'll be OK now, now that they warned me. All right. All right. It's me. Uh, so <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> awesome. And, and just to warn you, too, I, uh, my other hobby when I'm not doing stand up is um, I, I stalk celebrities. Like I don't go to hotels and, and airports and stuff, but I do have the conventions uh, habits that I go to. So shortly after meeting you, I'm going to get a photo for that album, the As Seen on TV album, and then I'll be normal after that. But uh, oh, first three fine. minutes, I'll, I'll definitely do that. <laughs> first and, uh, three minutes. I'm one time I, I told the host, says, how do I introduce you? I said, go up and say, please turn your cell phones off the next hour. Don't worry. You'll survive. And, and also keep your table talk to a minimum and your laughter to a maximum. There now from, you know, now from Los Angeles, here's Kayvon. The guy <laughs> went on stage and said, hey, so I guess I'm supposed to introduce uh, the comedian. He said to turn your phones off. I mean, I don't really know. I, I don't think you should, but <laughs> I think that's what he wants you to do. You don't have to, actually. There's no way we can force you. And <laughs> and uh, he said not to talk and stuff, but we do have, you know, open bar in the back. So, you know, get your drinks while you can. And uh, here he is. And he just held the microphone. I didn't even know if I should go out or not. <laughs> like, he um, wasn't very cooperative. I promise a better experience, at least in the introduction. <laughs> So. <laughs> okay, good. Then I know I'm in good shape. We we talked about it. Okay. Right, right. Well, we appreciate you stopping in here. Sorry to ambush you, thinking you're going to be on camera, but uh, we are uh, happy to have you here uh, uh, in audio form. We're going to have this replayed on podcast sites then later as content, and uh, you know I'll see you here in a couple weeks uh, in in Hobart, Indiana. 
Can't wait. I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye now. Thank right. you. Later. <laughs> so a lot of fun. Yes. He has a lot of fun. Yeah, so our next guest actually uh, is a, a fan of his as well. He was like, he's a good guy. I've met him. I like his stuff. So it's, uh, you know, uh, just got a lot of admiration on tonight's show. So we'll pull that poster up then. The three nights we've got with Kayvon coming up, Hobart, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Julia, Illinois. Um, those are all going to be at the very beginning of November. Those tickets are at madhattershows.com. And uh, if you're looking for free tickets, he gave us the way to do that. Go to his Instagram or his Facebook and shoot him a message and say, "Hey, want to come to your show?" And it sounds like uh, you're gonna he's gonna accommodate hook you up. him. Yes. So very good. Yeah. The, uh, we didn't talk about his TED talk. You have to search that too. He did like a, a Persian Christmas uh, TED talk. I think was uh, um, one of those Persian New Year. So um, yeah, he's a multifaceted guy. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, while we're waiting on our next guest to call in, let's preview a couple other events we have coming on. Uh, one of them I don't think has been announced on a podcast yet. So uh, you've seen this guy on Saturday Night Live and in the movies. He's in the new Nicolas Cage movies and Mean Girls. Uh, Tim Motos will be making his Mad Hatter Show's debut in January. You familiar with this guy? Uh, yes. The ladies' man uh, <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Uh, he had the movie as well. Um, guarantee he's a, he's in grown ups with uh, Adam Sandler, so um, a lot of stuff he's been on and uh, his stand up. I've actually seen his stand up. My buddy Kyle Fields opened for him in Springfield, uh, Illinois, one time. So I've actually seen his show. Um, but that should be a good time. We're gonna have him in Hobart, Indiana, and then two Michigan locations, uh, Saginaw and Grand Rapids. So I believe he's from Michigan. So I may get some uh, hometown hometown friends make that trip also to come check him out. So. Those tickets are going to be at madhattershows.com. Um, and, uh, hey, the doorbell again. Now, I think Mark is, uh, I think he's prepared to be on camera. Uh, we're not going to have to just pull up <laughs> photos of everything he's uh, he's accomplished on TV. So, so can you hear us, Mark? I can indeed. Hello, everybody. Uh, Kayvon opted for an audio <laughs> only, so I'm glad that you're uh, on camera here so we're not just pulling uh, family time. What does he have to worry about? A young, skinny guy like him? <laughs> He's, he didn't want to be on camera, really? I think he wasn't ready. I think I think maybe he wasn't uh, communicating. They called it podcast versus vodcast, and so maybe that was the... Uh, uh, how it went, but uh, we appreciate you. I'll being... just tell you, I had to angle the camera above the belly. <laughs> I've got a shirt. You can't. They don't make a shirt any blacker <laughs> and uh, looser than this one. And if you were here, I wouldn't be fooling anybody. Nice, nice. Well, we've got, we've got a co-host here who knows who you are as well. So uh, she was third, wanted to make sure you were on friend. this one. Uh, executive Hi. producer of one of your films, uh, Sandy Rusk. I'm sure you remember her. Hi, Mark. Oh, she's here. She's Hello, other, Sandy's here. She's yes, the other uh, here. host here. <laughs> so nice to Hello, see Sandy. you. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. I didn't know you were a part of this. Yes, yes. So you um, work in associate. This is the Mad Hatter podcast. Yes. <laughs> and when did I, you team up with the Mad I, Hatter, Sandy? I've known him for a while. Maybe not quite as long as I've known you, but you know he sometimes has me on as this close i think we actually met okay. because of the the mark uh price show at jokers in like 2016 yes. maybe that's in indianapolis uh -huh. um, remember that that's crazy guys so okay so have you ever met the mad hatter sandy uh yes that'd be john i, I guess is the yeah. mad hatter yes, right? i have yeah and uh and tell me about john a little bit because uh we've known each other over the years <laughs> but was he a comic at one point he was not. He he's managed uh, like three different comedy clubs, so he uh, he's just been in the business. Um, but uh, yeah, he's never actually been on stage, and I kind of appreciate he hasn't tried to do that. Every now and then, a promoter will uh, will will try to play both ways and go up and intro everybody. So, um, do you have the uh, do you have like the the feed pulled up? Are you watching like the Mad Hatter show? Like, you're actually surprised that Sandy's on here. Is that uh, you? You don't see what's going on, right? If we're doing the stuff with our hands, you can't see it. I see you for some reason, but I don't see Sandy. Oh, now I see Sandy too. I guess it's it's a little. Hi, Sandy. Hello. How are you? Oh my I'm gosh. Good. Oh my gosh. I'm Lots hogging of the camera. That's what's happening here. <laughs> Can you indeed, believe indeed. that was 2015, eight years ago, when you came to Indianapolis and were on set filming with us? Pre-pandemic. Pre, pre I know. Look how young Sandy is I in that photo right actually, there. Actually, that's, that's not me. Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> that's not me, unfortunately. 
Um, but yeah, we we uh, spent uh, some time together on that set, didn't we? Well, you did an amazing job, really. An executive producer is not something that people can just usually walk into that position and then pull it off so eloquently. And boy, did you ever. <laughs> everybody that was involved in that movie, everybody who's seen that movie, they have a respect for you because you did something that most people can't do. You just, you you know, but you have a series of those in your life. You've uh, set your sights on goals and you accomplish them. And then here you are hosting a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it was by the seat of my pants. You know that, Mark. <laughs> but, but in the it. end, you it all it. came together really nice. You did a great job. Really nice I just play a small role in this wonderful movie, by the way. But the cast is fantastic. The lead girls and uh, the director did such a great job. I was so impressed with the crew. And all of that starts with the executive producer. Oh, thank you. Well, I I'm... think we got a copy here. Uh, it's, uh, so if you guys are yes. interested in this mystery movie, it's called Wigged Out and you can, uh, is it on Amazon? Like, what's, what's the best way to get a hold of this movie? Um, actually, just to reach out to me directly right now. Uh, because, because... <laughs> She's got them in the trunk of her car, <laughs> along with well, assorted jams and well, jellies. Be, because it's actually, um, it, it ended up being a a tool to help families who have children with alopecia. So even though the technology feels outdated with having DVDs, I think if you're, you know, if you have a child with alopecia, because, you know, it has um, pictures, of course, one of Mark along the back, um, it's, it's more tangible, if that makes sense. So we still have DVDs for it. That, I remember that big charity event in Las Vegas for kids with alopecia. Yes. And they screened the movie. Yes. And that was thrilling, too. And it really does have an effect, and it really does make an impact, on, especially for kids. Uh, you know, it's about teenagers, but uh, traditionally kids like to watch up a little, you know, so it's yes. really good for young kids with alopecia. What other movie is there for them? Nothing, right? right. This is it. And you're right. People came from all over the world for that was part of the Children's Alopecia Project, their international conference. And families were there from all over. You came in, and um, we even had um, Rob Snyder was there, who called Adam Sandler from the stage. I don't know if you remember, oh, that, I remember but, that. I remember um, that. That was that was cool. It was a very uh, so. Amazing speaking event. of comedians calling in, so you guys had Kayvon on tonight. Yes. And isn't he? Do you guys? He's funny. He is. Yeah, very he's gonna funny. be. He's gonna be a good time. Where that's the first weekend in November, second weekend in November, we got you, uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, Richmond, Indiana. So, uh, you know, we're excited about that. You're coming back to Indiana. And I'm I coming back to Indiana. I like to uh, tell Kayvon. I like to warn him because he's so funny and he's young and he's not yet embittered by show business. <laughs> he's got his whole life ahead of him. Such a bright future all the potential and possibilities. And I like to say, I used to be him. <laughs> and it's only a matter of time before he too has C cups. <laughs> it's coming. Well, it's funny. We, we, we went back a couple decades and got uh, the Ginger Dead Man. Uh, the Ginger Dead Man 2 was a movie he was in where he had a little bit more hair in that, uh, in that movie. And it was the same guy. He had the MTV credit. So he spaced out uh, some of his stuff. Um, not nearly as much as you, though. You have uh, you were doing this as a kid, right? Like you were the kid comedian. Is that? Uh... <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's. I'm just remembering now that the first time we saw Kayvon was on that prank show on MTV, wasn't uh -huh. it? Yeah. That was where he showed up for the first time. He was very good on that. But yeah, I um I started. I was a little kid a comedian. My dad was a comedian. Do you know that, Neil? I yeah, know I, Sandy knows. I yeah. I definitely know that. I don't know if Neil. Did no, that. I remember you. You told me before because um, when we were preparing the other the other shows, and then I did a little uh, refresher uh, stalking online uh, recently and, and pulled that up. But your well, your mom was in show business as well. That's right. She always gets pissed when I don't mention her. She's like, why do you always mention your dad? You don't mention me. I had a lot of you. She did a lot. See, she was in Las Vegas. And she was a female solo singer back in the Mad Men generation where they were rude to women. And she had to wear the little, you know, dress on stage and stuff. And she, they didn't treat her very well. So she hated show business. She Aww. hated my father. And uh, she hated the idea that I love show business so much. And sadly, I... Uh, I left town. I, she had it all worked out for me. I should, you know, you know that saying: you always listen to your mother. Well, we got a couple of your teen heartthrob uh, moments of just popping up on the screen yeah. from Teen Win Loser Draw and then Trick or Treat. So, uh, um, I'm sure you're most recognizable as Skippy. But how often does someone bring up one of your other projects when they see you on the street? Well, Halloween time, Trick or Treat seems yeah. to come up. That heavy metal band that Fastway that did the soundtrack and Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons, of course. You know, their fans are 
pretty loyal right. and uh and 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 you want to be loyal to your heroes because they could turn on you. <laughs> and when you were here in Indianapolis, it was amazing when you and I were out on our little media tour that we did. How many people recognized you as Skippy? We would just, I'm sure you probably remember this too, and I'm sure it happens to you all the time even now. But at the time, it happens, people, it happens. People but the younger like, generation, Sandy, doesn't know the show at all. That's what's really amazing. You have to yeah. be of a certain age. Well, Which is not true. fair because, to, like, uh, this is my biased opinion because I grew up up uh you know watching you on tv but i watch a lot of reruns uh family ties is on the short list of my favorite sitcoms ever made so i mean that's a that's an incredible uh list <laughs> i was the kid that stayed inside watching tv instead of being outside playing uh, you know as, as a youth so um you were on one of the premiere shows of the 80s uh, especially and that was you know the sitcom's almost dead now you know and and uh, it so. seems like it i i think that uh kevin uh james yeah maybe wins mm-hmm. comedy on sitcoms <laughs> because i don't think there's anybody that'll ever make as much money as he made on his <laughs> show ever again and uh and it was on for so many years and all that i think king of queens and kevin james is the winner of stand-up comedian with the sitcom <laughs> that was funny but you know every now and then uh family ties pops up on one of my cable episodes uh, ch- channels and I happened to see the funniest Family Ties episode and it was when Skippy and Mallory got locked in the basement do you remember, <laughs> do you remember what I'm talking about I remember I remember <laughs> I, I know that the guy that um, created the Skippy character yes. our, our, our beloved writer producer uh, he wasn't the, the creator of the show and the executive producer he was one of the top writer producers for our show and he went on to create king of queens that was his show right right well anyway, that little trivia that episode was great is there any is there anything about that episode that you can just share with me just because i was so intrigued by it I'm trying to remember that uh i know there's another episode where alex rents out the house because there's a big sports game a big college yeah. game coming to town and there's no hotels and everything mm-hmm. and so he rents out the house like a hotel uh, and that was pre airbnb uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah, he kind of yeah. cracks the airbnb code right there <laughs> and that was a fun episode that everybody shows up at the house and they steal a mascot there's a kangaroo and all kinds of stuff well, you've seen me on on Facebook. I'm a, I'm a guy that goes to the conventions. I even told Kayvon about that before. I, I'm into pop culture. I'm into reliving things. And so uh, my girlfriend has, was not familiar with Perfect Strangers. We're meeting Mark Lynn Baker here in a couple weeks. Uh, so we went back and we were watching that. And I was I could not remember any of the exact episodes. Like you know how you it's been so many years and you remember something about the show, but you don't remember the exact episode. So it's like I'm watching a lot of these for the first time. So preparing for this show, I, I sat down and I was like, what do I remember from Family Ties? And two of the six episodes I came up with were Skippy episodes. So um, there's the one where, where uh, Alex is kind of watching you on your date in the Italian restaurant. Do you remember this one where, uh, where you're too nervous? That, is that your favorite one? That's the one where Mallory kisses me. <laughs> that's why, oh, is that why so it's your favorite? you remember that one <laughs> I never I never washed my face that's why my face is so dirty I never I never washed it since no I was I was truly in love with her and uh she of course uh, truly had no interest in me because I was a couple of years younger and I was nerdy and she was the ingenue and uh you know I didn't have a chance but it was okay it was okay but when was... you got trapped in that basement if anyone has an opportunity to see that episode it is just hilarious and uh do you keep so. up with their reruns like do you know what where they're just streaming at and all that or is it just you've moved on and, and it's just a memory now i don't really uh keep track but uh, to quote rachel zegler from the uh, snow white disney movie uh if i'm gonna wear an iconic chipmunk costume <laughs> you remember the episode oh so you be do stuck remember in the it. basement <laughs> yes so then i am gonna be paid for every minute that it is streaming <laughs> on, on a streaming platform i weird, knew you remembered weird. you just didn't want to talk about it <laughs> Oh my! So I want to be very careful to be respectful. I don't want to be like her. <laughs> You're not getting the rude to my, ties, the uh, thing that brought me notice. Uh, That's why I like to raise money for Michael J. Fox Foundation at every stop on the tour. Yeah, coming up. Uh, right now, we do a lot of where we sell the merchandise. 100% goes to Michael J. Fox Foundation. We have a, a, a show coming up in Toronto where the ticket sales, 100% of the whole night goes to Michael J. Fox Foundation. And it's not just me. It's Steve Heitner 
the guy who played Kenny Banya on Steve. Seinfeld. I love yeah. Steve. She interviewed Steve, and I, uh, I got I got to, to tour with him on his his weekend with us last year. So that was yeah, that was a good time. Isn't and, he hysterical off stage too? Uh, He's a lot of fun. Right? Yeah, uh, super good guy, and it, very humble. Like like he let me pick his brain, but he you know he just very humble humble brag by you know what I mean? Like it's just he's been in so many projects. He just knows everybody and he's just been on, on all these things for years and years and years. It's just it's it's amazing having conversations with him. He comes from the New York City comedy scene, so that's a good place to yes. to get it going on. <laughs> <laughs> so family ties, because I'm a big fan. So I want to I want to dwell on this for a little bit longer. Even though we're not plugging the show so much, I'm just I got you uh, held hostage. Where am I? Well, let's do that. Where am I playing? Come on. What are the names of the venues? <laughs> uh, the new Boswell Brewery is going to be in Richmond, and then the Zora Shrine in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. So we've got that. Um, and what are the what are the dates? Where am I? Which night? Where? November the 9th is in Terre Haute, and November. The tenth is in Richmond, and those tickets are at so Mad Hatter shows. Thursday, Terre Haute. Did I say that right? Terre Haute, yes. <laughs> and Friday, Richmond. Absolutely, I think that's right. And the, I'm going to be the Mad Hatter. At, at least one of those. I'm not sure which one yet. So, I look forward to seeing you, yeah, Sandy. I know it'll be fun. Now, if there's uh, somebody out there that's uh, not ne- able to be in Indiana, and uh, you still want them to uh, be introduced to some of your work, uh, where would where would they start? Like, are you? Uh, what are you most proud of as far as uh, you know having somebody check out what you've done over your career? Ijoke.com is probably the best site, which takes me, by the way, to MarkSkippyPrice.com. You can go to either one, but Ijoke.com is easier to remember. And uh, I just want to say that. Uh, traveling around on the road, it's not as easy as it was many years ago because of all the celebrities in Hollywood and their horrible behavior. It makes <laughs> it very difficult on me. Mm. I, I just want to point that out. I'd like to thank Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> America's it's... dad turned America's super predator. Yes. Which used to run before <laughs> family ties. Yeah, you're 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 taking me back to my memories and now you're tainting I, them. So that's <laughs> I I'm tainted, exactly. I played an innocent character on an 80s sitcom and now I'm instantly suspect. <laughs> I play these nightclubs, the girls don't even touch their drinks. Thank you, Bill Cosby. <laughs> I I don't I want everyone to know I need to make this announcement, make it very clear. I don't use roofies. The women I sleep with choose to forget. <laughs> Noted. We will. Uh, we, that needs to be chopped up, and we'll make a reel of that uh, the week of the show, and we'll we'll blast it on our page. <laughs> awesome. Well, we. I'm looking forward to the shows. I'm going to be uh, in the building. I think I'm opening the the, the two nights uh, that you're going to be uh, that we're on that poster. So we'll definitely uh, talk some old school uh, TV and movies and all that. Uh, appreciate you checking us out today and uh, giving us a call it's still you're on the west coast where you've still got the night ahead of you it's like 48 degrees and pitch black outside right now in indiana so we're gonna hmm. we're gonna be heading home and going to bed so <laughs> okay well then uh you know it's uh it's a weeknight and i'm older now so i'm probably gonna be <laughs> going to bed any minute myself <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's fun getting older it beats the alternative, as it they does. always say, right? So, um, my dad, my dad used to say, "I'd rather be over the hill than under one." There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we there appreciate you, you giving us a call here tonight. We'll see you in a few weeks, and uh, look forward to it. Love your guts. That's the opposite of hate your guts. It's a very loving, positive thing. Sandy knows what I'm talking about. I've heard it many times. <laughs> and by the way, this is all just a set. I just want you to know, I I don't read books. I, I went to school on the set. This is. This is just a movie set right here. I actually live in a trailer. All right. right. Yes, that's that's a story in itself. We're going to be talking about that when I interview you next. I'm I'm on the map of the star's home, Neil, in Hollywood. Right. And I don't know how they know where I park my trailer. And don't you have to move it ever so often, you said? There's there's laws, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tires moving. Wow. Well, it's going to be a good time at, our, at the show here. Uh, definitely people will want to come out and uh, you know see somebody they watched growing up. Or even if you're not familiar with that show, clearly you, you're a funny guy. I'm sure you, you reference the show, but most of your act is, is anything you might see at a, at a comedy club somewhere, right? Yeah, I guess that's how you put it. I, I don't even reference it all that much anymore now that a lot of the comedy club audiences are younger, you know? And yeah. so, you know, Mallory jokes don't work anymore. <laughs> I've had to come to terms. <laughs> well, We're we... all getting old. What a depressing end of the co- podcast uh, here. So that's... <laughs> older audiences, though, they remember. They definitely do. <laughs> Besides, there's good things about getting older, too, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, definitely. You <laughs> when you figure them out, please. Fact me or something. Fact. <laughs> 
fact. That's how you know I'm old. I'm actually asking for a fact. <laughs> well, we'll send you a, a, a you know a message. You can page, you hit your pager, and then you can go to a payphone and and give us a call. You you know I'm old because I'm still on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your top eight? I don't know, but I like to say my naked body is like MySpace. Nobody's on it anymore. Oh wow. <laughs> awesome all right well we will see you here in a few weeks uh, thanks a lot mark for calling in bye guys bye Thank sandy you. see you soon love you. your guts uh-huh bye mark how cool how cool <laughs> very cool oh guy. My. very accommodating but also he was just like i'm not going to talk about family ties for a half an hour with you so that's uh i don't blame him uh uh, that is a very good episode, though, if you ever had a chance. You know what? To... I, I'm sure I've seen it, but I need to revisit that one. I I, the, I remember the one where he was uh, trying to get in the fraternity, and they were, um, I believe they were they were acting like they were interested in him just to make fun of him, and that was another episode Aww, that was yeah. that was one of them that I remembered uh, that he was in. But, of course, um, one of the other ones that was one of my favorites was another secondary character. Do you remember when Mallory starts dating Nick? Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, and Skippy was so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Valentine, not on nearly as many episodes uh-huh. as Mark Price, but he was another. I think a show has to. I think a show has to have secondary characters that you like mm-hmm. to. You know, you can't just have a few good leads and make it several seasons. I think you have to have enough other moving parts around it and skippy was one of those that wasn't in the main family right but like he you know and he was even referenced in episodes he wasn't on and there we go we gotta get scott yeah. valentine on a podcast yeah. here i, I don't know if he, he's got a stand-up act or he could show up and sign autographs at a show or something but that dude uh like yeah just hilarious and i'm such a big fan of, of that as well so um, well, well that was certainly fun yeah a lot of good episodes so uh, memory lane i'm gonna go home and Pull up Tubi and watch the Ginger Dead Man 2 and uh, maybe a Family Ties episode before bed tonight. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> a yeah. couple more shows we got to go over, though, before we're off the air. I think we've covered a lot of them that are coming up, but just kind of a, a quick recap here. Coming up uh, in uh, February, uh, we're going to have Shelly Belly. She's also going to be on the New Year's Eve show. So. Um, you see, here's one of her reaction videos. If you're not familiar with Shelly Belly, uh, that's a common face of hers. <laughs> um, she looks a little more crazed than she is in real life. She's a really <laughs> nice lady, a nice looking lady in real life, very, you know, prim and, and proper, but a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, just online, like you do think she's just a nut. So um, she kind of walks that line uh, in real life, but uh, definitely looking forward to doing some shows with her. And she's announcing a lot of her 2024 dates. So um, definitely you'll want to check her out. Josh Josh Prey, who we had on a podcast a couple times ago and who will be on another one soon, I hope, since we've got more shows coming up with him and uh, he was kind of a hit. Uh, we're going to keep going on with him. So um, in January, he's going to be doing the Indiana um, Joliet uh, Hobart Trio, uh, the same way that, that Kayvon is doing. Um, but we're also going to have him in Iowa here next month. So there's five dates of his at MadHatterShows.com and you'll want to check him out uh, when you can as well napoleon dynamite is going to be in january also napoleon dynamite there's uh the guys how they look now wow we're all aging a little bit they, that movie was like 20 years ago now so that's uh you know this will be like the 20th and i believe that when that show happens it'll be the 20th anniversary of the movie so and what a unique way for them to incorporate the audience and you know, it's, yeah. it's a unique um, experience. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Another sitcom veteran and sketch comedy veteran, Tim Meadows, will be making his debut with us. Best known for Saturday Night Live. Those shows are also going to be in January. Tickets at MadHatterShows.com. If you're in Michigan or in uh, Hobart, Indiana, Chicago land area, you'll want to come out and check him out. He's got way more credits than we could have put on the poster, but uh, you know, definitely a, a memorable character when he gets in movies and gets on uh, on TV. So that ought to be a lot of fun too. Um, Dave Landau is going to be uh, his shows were moved. We were originally going to have those in August. They're still on, so uh, you still have your chance to see Dave Landau in December in Hobart and Indianapolis. And uh, definitely hope you will. He's another one like Kayvon that is uh, not scared to. Uh, do some right wing comedy to to make fun of the left and then risk being uh, <laughs> being canceled or having people uh, uh, in an uproar. He's got that Blaze TV show, so um, definitely he's uh, he's going to do some 
so I'm talking on stage without fear of of uh, you know alienation from certain audiences. So he's definitely going to be a, a, a good time there. And you can check him out on Blaze in the meantime if you want to get some uh, a preview of him. Uh, Dave Dugan is uh, he was on a podcast with Dave Landau. We were plugging him in Lebanon, Indiana, a little while ago. We're bringing him back to Indiana, uh, his home state. He's going to be in Winnemac, Indiana. This is the only show that you can't get tickets at MadHatterShows.com. Um, it's a show we do a couple times a year at Tippies in Winnemac, Indiana. It's a pizza and beer place. They've got a second room now set up that's really cool. It's got a bar in the back and kind of a coffee shop lounge vibe in the front. Nice. Um, that's probably where we're setting up the shows now. So uh, he'll be a good time. That room only holds. I mean, it won't hold more than about 60 or 70 people. So um, you're going to want to get your tickets reserved ahead of time. You can call Tippies. Uh, I don't know if the number is uh, up on the screen. Sometimes I submit that. Sometimes I don't. But it's called Tippies. Tippies Pizza and Beer is another listing for it. Um, call, get your tickets, get those reserved. That's going to be on November the 11th. Pretty easy to remember, 1111, uh, Dave Dugan. So you can actually, if you're in Indiana, you can watch Skippy and then Dave Dugan on the same I weekend. I was just thinking that, yes. So that'll be a good time. A uh, guy I just did a weekend with last weekend, Kostaki Economopolis. I um, think I'd be better at saying his name since I've been saying it a couple times on the stage, but uh, still get a little tongue tied. But he's got. Uh, Two dates coming up in Ashtabula, Ohio, and also Erie, Pennsylvania. You can see right there, he's uh, calling in to the Bob and Tom show. That's where a lot of people know him from. He also works for All Pro Lines. If you're a football fan, he's going to talk some football on the stage. Uh, he's a, a Georgia Bulldogs fan, which makes him happy this year. He's also an Atlanta Falcons fan, which often makes him not happy this year. So, uh, But uh, he knows a, a lot about uh, the NFL as well, as well as just... Uh, you know, a, a wealth of knowledge, uh, being of his ad advanced age. He's, a, he's in our age group as well. He's in our, like everybody we've had on the show tonight. Uh, um, I think Kayvon was the youth movement. But, uh, yeah, Kostaki's uh, been a, a stand-up comedian for a long time. He's an old pro, and uh, he's a lot of fun. So if you're a Bob and Tom fan or if you're a fan of football or you're just interested in uh, a guy that's the longest uh, longest name uh, that uh, he calls himself the biggest name in comedy, there you go. Um, which sounds better than longest, I guess. Um, those shows are coming up in January as well, and uh, we've mentioned Skippy and Kayvon a lot. Uh, so the other one I do want to bring up is Uncle Laser. Um, hopefully, we'll have him on the podcast coming up. We're trying to negotiate the right days to have him. I don't know if a couple weeks from now, if you're going to be out of the state, but if you're not, maybe you can join us to uh, to talk to Uncle Laser. So. And we can definitely feel old because he's young and hip and utilizes TikTok. So oh. that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> we won't have much to contribute. <laughs> he's like, I know he's on Facebook, but he like he doesn't have all that many fans yeah. on Facebook. And then you're like, uh, he's headlining shows already. And then you look at TikTok and you're like, good lord. So uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of the young followers and the the hip followers. So, uh, but you see him on all the social media networks. Uh, he was. Uh, this weekend at a live UFC event, I saw he's 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 getting himself known because the bantamweight champion of the world knows Uncle Laser. They were posing for pictures together, so um, that should be a lot of fun too. So, a lot of shows coming. If you're in the Midwest, you don't really have a great excuse um, if you don't make it to one of these shows because it's you know that's where a lot of the ones are concentrated here. We're kind of a mm -hmm. national company, but Midwest heavy for the next couple months. So. And Definitely. you are typically everywhere. Yeah, so we, uh, <laughs> to be here in Central Indiana, we're uh, spoiling you for the cold time. weather. Yeah, <laughs> check us out. You can hear all the old podcasts. Also, this is like the thirty-fifth one or something. You can hear the old ones and see some of the celebrities we've interviewed by going to any place that uh, great podcasts are played. You can also dig in the archives and the video archives on Mad Hatter shows and Mad Hatter podcast on Facebook. So we encourage you to. Uh, check out our old material as well we're kind of building the library and uh there's like six or seven of these episodes with sandy so it can be a kind right. of a fun game to go through the co-hosts and try to keep finding sandy <laughs> i'm there as you said in quite a few of them <laughs> awesome well we'd love to see you at a show and if you see sandy on the street uh get one of these out of here her her trunk <laughs> wigged out uh, the movie with Chip Winkleman, aka Mark Skippy Price. So. Winkleton. Winkleton. You were close. <laughs> Skippy Handelman, yes. Chip Winkleton. He's the beauty pageant uh, announcer. 
Awesome. We'll see you guys here uh, hopefully in a couple weeks here. And uh, keep tuned to the page to see the exact time and date. We appreciate you tuning in on the Mad Hatter Shows podcast. Thank you.